it's Alex Torelli, I'm here with Sean Deep. We just played an awesome episode of Poker Night in America. Probably, I, I think, it, the best episode that's ever been filmed. Definitely, I think, the biggest game that we've had on Poker Night in America so far, wouldn't yeah, you say? Yeah, I mean, I've played a lot of big games, but the blinds were irrelevant in this game. Like, there was everyone straddling. There were more double straddles than any other game I've played, so uh, it played big, and people were not folding. Everyone was deep, and there were a lot of swings. And there were a lot of sick calls, a lot of sick blocks, and, you know, it's a great game. Yeah, absolutely awesome. You had a really interesting hand today come up. I was actually doing the commentating in this hand, um, but you had a really cool spot. Why don't you walk us through when you had the 8-7? This is like an interesting hand where like the table talk influenced the action. So normally this hand, 7-8 off is not my 3-betting range that deep out of position versus someone I think is a very good player. 4-betting, right? Because it no, was open no, call. No, it was, it was not a 4-bet. No, oh, okay. it was uh, double straddle. Right. Griff, Griff double straddled um, to 200. Uh, Jack made it 700 the button. He's obviously very wide here. And as he should be. I mean, he's a, probably the best player at the table at no limit. And he's got the button and he's got a ton of chips and everyone else is deep. So he makes it 700, and, uh, or 600, sorry. And Griff, make, he, Griff makes a speech about wanting a hand. And Jack's like, I was like, oh, the guy wants aces. How greedy can you be? He's like, no. Jack's like, he just wants like 7 8. He's good with that. And I look down as he's saying 7 8, and I see 7 8. Oh, so, yeah. so I'm just like, this is going to be really funny to like run this bluff through and just show 7 8. Like, hey, Griff, I got what you wanted to catch. So, like, right. And everyone's going to think aces, then he's going to see 7 8. So our three bets to 2,100. Um, we're like 35K deep, I think. And maybe I could have went a little bigger. I don't know. But I think it was fine. I hadn't really messed with Jack. Like, we both give each other a lot of respect. So he, I just stayed out of his way like in three and four bet pots and he was not really involved with me even though we're sitting next to each other we didn't really get involved as much as people would think right and that kind of happens when two people really respect their game and there's a lot of weak other spots yeah in your the game. image plays a lot into yeah your credibility and getting getting away with and, and also I don't want to necessarily three bet nicely Jack and play him heads up if I have a good hand I'm gonna call and want to let the weaker players behind yeah I like that. five or six ways so it's like a very interesting dynamic with that absolutely and he, he's smart enough to know that a lot of your hands pre-flop are gonna call that have playable value like ace jack suited maybe he's just going to call to let yeah those other players in the pot. Hands, exactly yeah. so like my my hand range becomes even more polarized than normal like i even could have fled ace or kings i think it's someone might squeeze could just be deceptive you know there's a lot of reasons why right. i could doing the madness at the top of my range that i usually do so anyway uh he he ends up like uh, everyone folds and he like kind of doesn't seem happy about it. You know, yeah. like, I'm not a big libraries guy, but I could tell, like, he was just like, man, I haven't been able to play a pot with Sean in position. He's on my left, and, like, we're just deep. I'm just going to call. So, like, right. I kind of felt like he was light, and he didn't know what I had, but he's just like, I'm going to play my pot. Yeah, I'm playing the pot. Yeah. So flop comes gin for me, uh, deuce five nine rainbow. Which when you have seven eight, that's like the best flop. You know, right. one of the best flops because he misses a ton with all his Broadway hands. He has weak hands, and I still have some percentage of time I have over pairs. I have, you know what I mean, a whole bunch of hands. It's so, it's so much less about what you specifically have, but rather what you can represent yeah. and what is likely that your opponent has. Yeah, I mean the deuce and the five are almost never in his hand. They like, already has ace deuce suited, ace five suited. But I don't think he would have been so sad to even call those. Right. Free, and so. you can get them off those by the river. Yeah, Plus, you have a lot of equity yeah, versus those. I, I have 10 outs for some, right, you know what I mean? Right. So, I just know it's a board that there's going to be a lot of runoffs I'm going to win. Right. There's just, it's going to be tough for him to continue, and he's aware of that. So, he's just not going to float me with 10 8 there. Because he knows he can't he, get he, to the river. And, and he knows his range is too weak. So. Right. So uh, it's tough for him to float that flop because right. he has just so many weak one pairs or no pair hands and I have all the better hands, you know? And I don't think he was aware of how much I perceived him to not have pocket pairs in his range because usually in that spot, the person who calls a raise is set mining a ton and so on the deuce five nine board, he's gonna call some of his lower pairs assuming that I've missed over. Right, right. So all this gives credence to you being able to credibly bluff the flop with yeah. a plan to go three streets. Exactly, so I, I think I bet two K on the flop, which is small. It's like more of a turn side. A lot of cash game guys bet bigger there, how deep we are, but I don't care. I just know his range. I'm going to bet that amount with whatever I have, yeah. and I just take a stab. And, you know, it's also a good price for my gut shot, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I for sure. Him, because if I bet really big, he might say, okay, he's just going to bail off. I might as well either raise, get it in, and not let him turn out, you know? So yeah. I bet small, so if he's like, ah, if I want to call, I can call. Right. So he ends up calling.
turns an uh, offsuit 10, so now there's no flush draw possible. Great so card now, for you. Yeah, it gives me another straight draw, you know, the jack. It's not enough straight, but I don't think he has king, queen, or queen eight to float and then float again. Yeah, it's a great card because, you know, now his nines really shrink up. Because yeah, because I, I could have jack 10 suited. You could bet a 10. Yeah. And, and I would for sure bet all those hands are value. And all your over cards with, with yeah, no like equity on the flop, yeah. like queen jack, now picked up a ton of outs. Yeah. So it's really hard for him to continue here. Yeah, so I, I bet 4,500, which is a, uh, a little under half pot, um, which I would do again because no flush draw board and, and I like my range. So right. I don't I don't tend necessarily bet really big when I have them crushed most of the time. I want him to call with his hand that has five outs or less. Um, so he ends up tanking and calling. River comes, obviously the Jin card, the Perfect. six, yeah. and now this is where the true leveling war comes. And I could have picked any sizing, and I just went with shove because I know if I had ace jack, ace queen, king high, you know, I'm gonna queen do jack. that. Yeah, if I have uh, have any of those hands, I just got a pile because I think he's calling 7k, 8k too much. Right. So it's either shove or check. Yeah, and check. I don't. I think it's just gonna check back all as one pair of hands. Right. Like, like if, if the river was a jack, I would consider checking more because he might be like, okay, I have to turn my nine into a bluff because. He just rivered top pair, and he's like a 10 or a jack, and he can't value bet it because it's kind of a scary board, but he's right. going to check. Um, it's a spot where all the hands he's going to bet with are going to call your Exactly, hand. yeah. So there's no reason to check. And I, and I, don't think, I, I actually think he has almost no hands that are betting. Right, I agree. I mean, 9, 10 is He has all bluff catchers, almost. Yeah. So, so it's like... Or sets, it, it, but bluff catchers. Course, but we don't, yeah, we've kind of discounted sense right. based on live reads, which is not a huge part of my game, but I think it was very obvious in the hand. Yeah, that for what sure. Was going on. So anyway, like, I mean, you, and he had Queen 9 off. So like, it was like a great, great read by both yeah, of you. Yeah, like I made you know? a great sizing. I'm very happy and he wanted to call. Like I think um, he had like loaned out some money and I, like he just had cash and he didn't want to do it. If he had chips in his pocket, he was calling every time. Like <laughs> I really think that was like the deciding factor. Like, wow. Man, I don't want to just pull out like two two bricks and like have to reload. Yeah. I know so, a lot of a lot of that stuff plays into psychology and making yeah. decisions at the table, but great job by you, great read all around. Yeah. And, uh, awesome play. I, w I wonder what would happen if it was, you know, it, it everyone wants like, to replay that hand with every river card. It possible. sounds like your play would have worked because the six is such an inconspicuous river. He can't. He couldn't have thought that the six helped you. Well, he said so that he thought there was a chance I had seven eights. Right. And he's but, like, but I also have seven eight in my range. I'm like, yeah, but. It's not that likely. Right, you know? but if he's folding on a six, which only completes a few of your hands, yeah. he's definitely going to be folding on a king, yeah. an ace, uh, you know. Like the ace or king of five, one shove, I would just bet smaller because, like, I'm like, oh, now I just have, you know what I mean? Now it's so tough for you to call, and I know what you have, I'm trying to price you in. Right. I might bet 6K on a king, yeah. like, or an ace. Because you could like, have king, queen, Yeah, king and, and if I have, like, ace five king suited, jack. and I just, like, or, like, ace seven, say, like, you know what I mean? Some goofy ace high, the hand that I just, like, two barreled, I'm going to bet super small on the river because that ace almost never improves his hand, so right. I won't want him to call, so it's going to make it a tough call with third pair. And I could also be like making that bet with kings, nines, I mean any other over pairs, but I know the ace is a brick for his ring. Yeah, awesome hand, and thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, great. But thanks for sharing, where can yeah. people find you? You're on Twitter, you're on social oh, media, yeah. with bad um, grammar? I, I, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not as much fun as some people, but Sean Deeb at Twitter, S-H-A-U-N-D-E-E-V. -E -E I don't really tweet too much poker stuff. Uh, I really don't tweet anything but baby pitches. Like, I'm just that dad, you know, who does that. I, I love my family, and I'm thankful to be able to come and splash around this, uh, these spots and win sometimes. A lot of fun. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks. Cheers.